party robes, enjoy some wine and music, join the wine and music right now along with you guys, and then get ready for the rest of the day. Take the make take the makeup, hair, and other factors into consideration also. Bride gets wedding attire. This will take at least 20 minutes or so, especially if it's custom made. Also, put the accessories and shoes into consideration. Solo portraits and wedding party photos. Getting the solo portraits and posing with your wedding party will last an hour at least, maybe a little bit more depending on how organized everyone is. This is also the time to include parents in your shots while they still looking fresh. First look and couple and a couple of photos. You want to preserve a fresh first look with your beloved before you hit full throttle into the evening. It will take a maximum of 30 minutes because you're already in the mood and you're ready to go. Arrive at the ceremony place. If you're getting ready at the ceremony venue, then this is the time that you put your put everything else to use or put put to other use. However, if you if you be coming to the venue, set the timer for 30 minutes together with the guests. 30 minutes at the least, 45 minutes at the most. Ceremony for a huge ceremony with the rituals and readings take about an hour. Most weddings I've done, it's been about an hour and I've done hundreds of weddings and most of them usually doesn't go over an hour. If it's small and intimate, it would last for maybe 15, 20 minutes and that's maybe 10, 15, 20 people at the most. Family photos, this would take a minimum of one hour. Get these shots immediately after you get to the reception. Give the photographer a list to work with. Cocktail hour, which is what I make this show mostly about. Is the instrumental music that be going on is good for your cocktail hours. This is a crucial transition between the ceremony and reception as well. Keep the music on, the bar ready to serve guests as they arrive and mixing it up. Leave the guests without music, leaving the guests without music or drinks while they wait feels very awkward. It's quiet. Um, no one's really mingling. So you want to have the music going. You want to have the drinks flowing so everybody loosens up and they're enjoying themselves. The reception. This would this a couple a couple of things about the reception. This will take between two to three hours. Introduction and guests getting seated will take about twenty minutes. Speeches, oh my God, will take about fifteen minutes. Yeah, right. Meal and dance will take about forty minutes each. Cake cutting will take about 10 minutes at the most, I would say, while other minor activities may pop up. Receptions can differ differ based on venue and couple preferences. Most couples plan the reception in the following order. Bridal party is announced and does a grand entrance with dancing and music that concludes with the introduction with the newly married couple. With the newly married couple. For example, now if you aren't standing and clapping already, already do that now as I bring in for the very first time as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Smith something like that. I've done a few introductions in my day. Greeting or welcome to everyone after introduction, usually by the pastor or the father of the bride at the beginning. Dinner is served. After dinner, the bride and groom mingles, um, talks to everybody, introducing themselves to everybody around the um, ceremony or around the place. You know what I mean. Venue, blah, blah, blah. Speeches slash toast can be short or long, depending on how many does the toast, and how much time each takes up. The bride and groom cut the cake. These are like the order. First dance, daddy slash daughter dance, mother slash son dance, any special dances, dance floor opens, bouquet toss, garter toss, open dance. With that being said, many of these events can be done in different order if you wish as long as the DJ usually myself leads and lets everyone know what the plan is make sure that you give yourself plenty of time to eat and try to keep the speeches on the shorter end as most people will want to start dancing at that point my biggest advice for just pretty much just any wedding planning Whatever I can give is to reach out to your wedding professionals, your photographer, your wedding planner, your DJ, 
venue coordinator and have them check your timeline to make sure you haven't forgotten anything or planned too much time or not enough time for something. A wedding day can feel a little bit like a train going from station to station until it arrives at the party. The best thing you can do is really think about the timeline for the day so that the train moves continuously and doesn't have to come to a a complete stop. Follow these tips and hopefully you'll be ahead of the curve and be able to have a smooth and stress-free wedding. Then your wedding exit, once the whole fun winds down, the exit will take about 10 to 20 minutes depending on how grand how grand it is, confetti throwing, dancing, getaway cars, smoke bombs may add to this time. And these are my number four. This is my number four tip for your timeline out of my top 10 tips of wedding planning. Now, if you haven't tuned in for the first four episodes, first and foremost, shame on you. And two, this show talks about tips as you've been listening along to the do's and don'ts and planning of your wedding day, along with other tidbits about your special time with special with upcoming special guests to guide you through your amazing day. Music with original and instrumentals for your listening pleasure, like the one just playing in back. Hey, hey, hey. With guests from the music world, DJs, singers, and more artists coming soon, along with actor extraordinaires, also. And last but definitely not least, the wine of the day. A synopsis of the wine itself, as I said before, while I will be drinking throughout the show, as I am doing right now. And be talking with wine enthusiasts on the show like I have before. Also visiting wine venues and establishments like I did three weeks ago. And I will be doing again, interviewing the people in charge of their wonderful wines. So start tuning in to new as I give you the business and the pleasure of weddings, music, and wine podcast streaming on Spreaker.com right now, matter of fact, and available on all major streaming services along with iHeartRadio, Spotify, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Deezer, and Gio Saving, sponsored in part by The Den, E-N-T, because you can find everything you need in The Den. All right, so the next cocktail hour song comes right before we talk about the wine of the day, and it's all a little upbeat Island themed, just just a real just raggy type thrown in there called you know what rise up.
This is, this is DJ New. New, the most interesting DJ in the world. Welcome, welcome back to Weddings, Music, and Wine with New. Streaming on Spreaker.com right now, matter of fact, live streaming. Right now, streaming right now, major streaming services as well, including iHeartRadio, Spotify, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Deezer, Jio, Sivan, and Google Podcast. Sponsored in part by The Den ENT, because you can find everything you need in The Den. Hope you guys like that island. Who did you say guys? Guys and ladies. Hope you all like that island theme cocktail hour instrumental. For your next event, hopefully you use it. Hopefully you tune back in. You're tuning in right now, and you enjoy that little ditty that I just played. I also want to thank everyone for joining me on this beautiful June Sunday evening. But now, now, finally, finally, it's the wine of the day. It comes in the form of Espulu, Espula del Gacho. Fine wine of the Andes Malbec 2010. First, the art of tasting wine. Smell it. Mm. Get your entire nose into the glass, which is what I'm doing. Ah, swirl it around and taste it. And that's the art of wine tasting. Now, the wine of the day is the, like I said, the Escuela. Escuela. I'm, not, I'm just mispronouncing it because I've probably been drinking too much of this wine. <laughs> Espula del Gacho, the fine wine of the Andes, Malbec 2010. Ah, yes, another Malbec. This time it's the 2010 vintage Espula del Gacho Malbec, which is, of course, out of the Mendoza province of Argentina. The Malbecs coming out of Argentina have continues surging in popularity despite the recent trend of people shifting toward drinking sweet red and pink wines. I think the allure of the Argentinian Malbecs are the value. The middle shelf Malbecs are running only about $15 to 20 bucks, which makes many of them a hell of a bargain. So what's gotcha? Well, it's essentially a term used for the South American equivalent of a cowboy or a cattleman. Something which is big, big part of the Argentinian culture. I assume the winemakers were trying to capture some of that lifestyle and vibe into this wine. When 